When I first went up on the Tibetan plateaus in 1981 and nobody thought about climate change, nobody thought about melting glaciers. We were just out in a very wild, inaccessible, seemingly overwhelming natural environment. When you look at a glacier, you can't help but be impressed by its sheer massive bulk and size. And it seems like nothing could affect it. But of course, that's not true any longer. The industrialization of the world and climate change is affecting them and is melting them. You don't even need a chart. You don't need an XY graph. You just look at those images and you know something very important. There's a big problem here. These glaciers are melting. Some of them are melting extremely fast. Pictures and images have power beyond uh, words. I'm camped at 18,000 feet on the north side of Everest uh, in Tibet at the confluence of the Maine and West Rongbo glaciers. When you really see it firsthand, uh, it's, it's so powerful and one only wishes that many more people could, could see it and feel it as, tan as tangibly um, as I do. The scale of things is just enormous. When you stand there and you see it and you feel it, it's, it's very humbling to see that something is, as seemingly immutable as the glaciers of Everest, uh, to see them just dissolving and melting away. 可能我花了两三个小时才到。It probably took me a couple of hours to hike to the vintage point I chose. When I climbed up there and looked back, I thought, Oh, this glacier is so magnificent. And I got really excited and started immediately setting up my camera. This time, they went there and came back. The result is truly shocking. You see nature in such a short time. We went there in 1976, so it's been just over 30 years. It never occurred to me that Yangtze source could have changed so much in a couple of decades. Once the glaciers have melted away, you can imagine how the ecosystem will also change. But we can tell that people are puzzled by all this. Why it's getting hotter and hotter? Why the quality of our pastures is going down? Why our yaks and sheep are losing weight? People don't know why. And there are more and more health problems for people too. The fact is, they didn't contribute much to the warming climate but they are the ones taking the brunt toll of the earliest environmental consequences. Before, we only drank meltwater from the glacier. Everyone used to drink from it. Now we cannot drink it anymore. When the glacier melts, the water becomes murky all over, and often it's milky year-round. The Minyong Glacier will be gone in 50 years. It's sure to happen. 50 years at most at the current rate. After that, we will enter precarious era, a time plagued by tremendous disasters. Melting of those glaciers is an enormous problem for Tibetan nomads, which is something we should take seriously. But the number of Tibetan nomads is small compared to the number of people who live downstream from those glaciers, at the bottom of the Yangtze, of the Yellow, of the Solween, of the Mekong, of the Brahmaputra, of the Ganges. Something like one-third of the people in the world live downstream along the rivers that flow from those glaciers. Well, that's changing, and changing very fast. Temperatures elevate much more rapidly at high altitudes, uh, such as in the Himalayas, and the effect is not only to melt these massive ice fields and glaciers, but also to uh, melt permafrost, which traps enormous amounts of methane, a very, very uh, consequential heat-trapping gas. Permafrost is also a major carbon reservoir in our country, accounting for about 23% of China's total organic carbon. Now we think it's carbon sink, 
But with climate change, we're not sure whether or not it will become a major source of carbon discharge into the atmosphere. We have actually just begun our research into this subject. As of the effect on the ecological environment, it's mostly about water. Less and less water will be retained for the soil and vegetation there, and some plant species may dry up and die out. Now there are fewer and smaller pastures. We have to move at least 12 times a year. With this going on, people and animals will both have a hard time finding drinking water. Maybe in my lifetime we won't see all the consequences, but for the next generation, that's what I'm most worried about. We also did an art installation at the Yangtze source glaciers, putting 193 baby cribs on an ice sheet there. Babies are the future of every country, and the future for the whole world. In the context of climate change, we have to consider our future. We assumed, I think for many years, that it didn't have much to do with us, but it turns out they do. because glaciers feed uh, in Asia almost every major river system. And around those rivers, all of the great civilizations of Asia have arisen. And today, they still depend on those waters. That's some two billion people. As a China specialist, one may wonder, why do I care about climate change? I care about it because, uh, first of all, I'm a human being, and second of all, because of the role that the U.S. and China play in contributing to climate change through the burning largely of coal. And these two countries simply must get together to find a solution, or the world will be denied a solution.